Nine of What's Up Lobo After Hours, a show that I thought that I was going to do for fun, but it's become the flagship of the digital network. How's everyone doing? It's your boy Flo Pito, Flo Pito.com. We're going to have a good old time in the house. Before we do, I just use my special guest who's going to rock with me all hour, talking, chatting, having time about lives. Give it up for the man who has his own digital network. He writes books. He does music. He is a, a professional organizer. He's a life coach. He's apparently a botanist or a gardener, too, if you ask him about it. He can cook. You can see him on his Instagram stories. Man, I don't know. I, he could probably break dance back in the day. I know he roller skate. Don't tell me he didn't roller skate. Give it up for James Lott Jr. How you doing, sir? <laughs> now, that's an intro. Hey, man. Well, special know, guest, man. <laughs> that's an intro. I've never had an intro like that before. And I Because you do it I all, will... man. <laughs> You I do it all. To that. Mm. So you are drinking. Unfortunately, I drank like two hours ago, so now I'm sort of oh, okay. with water. But but what are you what are you drinking, man? I'm curious. It's called a white Caribbean. Normally, I have my own show I'm doing right now on IG Live at yeah. James Junior. But because of that, I only Flo Beto would get me off of my show to do his at his time. Uh, yeah. So it's this signature drink for my show. It's called a white Caribbean. It's white rum from Puerto Rico. Hey. Um, yes, and uh, and uh, grenadine, a splash of cranberry juice, and no sugar mango juice. So again, I want to mention that you do have your own Instagram live. It's called Talk A Lot With James Lu John Jr. because you put everything with lot in it. We've been through this before, doing your puns. I can't stop it. But y'all, I'm so glad you're doing the show because we're just hanging out, talking. We have some people in the chat. Haywood Wong is already here. Chris oh, is already here. I just want to say thank you so much. If you have questions for James Lott Jr. or myself, please. This is what we're doing. We're just hanging out. Uh, James is drinking, so I don't know how, how good he's going to be over time. I don't really know. Mm, we'll see, we'll see what happens. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is. Haywood Wong says this is a weird world's collide. You know how many shows I've been on the James Lott Jr. Network? JLP I know. know. Do I know? We've done so many shows together. Did he not just suggest that we'd be on the same show last week? Wasn't it his idea? <laughs> It was, his, it was, it was, it was all his fault, Haywood Wong. Uh, yo. So, James, man, I, I just want to say, man, the way What's Up Love works, we sit, we talk, there's some things going on in the world this week. I want your perspective on things. You know what I'm saying? Because I know you are the man about town. Uh, for those of people who haven't seen your stuff, you do things full tilt. I tell people you're a full James Lott Jr. Ain't no substitute. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, I, you know, I do watch your show. I'm a fan of What's Up, Flobo. Because What's Up, Flobo? What's Up, Flobo? Uh, and, what's up, what's wearing, up, bro? And I'm wearing his merch. I bought this. He didn't give it to me for free. He didn't give me <laughs> anything. I went and actually spent my own money. And I bought it. Yeah, Flobito at Threadless.com. That's right, bitches. So get it. And it feels good. It feels good. I mean, I'm showing the arms. I usually don't show my body. But I'm yeah. showing the arms. But this thing is, I wear it all the time, Flobo. I wear it all yeah. the time. Yeah, I, mean, I see you turn the guns off, man. I know, like, this is actually our first story tonight. If you notice, that there's actually a shortage of dumbbells happening in the country because for some reason the supply chain broke down. Everyone's doing prison workouts in quarantine. Everyone's working out. I do I do 10 push-ups between bottles of beer. You know what I'm saying? I kind of mix it in there. How has your workout routine changed? with the whole COVID thing, man. How's that changed? When you first sent me the story, I was like, there's a lot of dummies out there. Oh, not those kind of dumbbells. Okay, got it. Um, you actually meant dumbbells, the actual thing. Thank you. You're a comedian. I got to keep up with you. Uh, one day I'll do stand-up one day. Says who, one man? Day. You went a whole hour to Ron, man, on your network. I saw that video. <laughs> I'm just saying. I dude. love my Tehran. I love him. I do. I love him. Um, but no, so when I read the story, I thought this is actually falls into what's happening out there, period. Because everyone is starting to be home, so they're grabbing all the things they can make. They're making makeshift gyms. A lot of my friends, I'm seeing them making stuff at home, so they got to buy it. Yeah, you can't go. You can't go because the gyms are open. Then they're closed. Then they're open. Then they're closed. Like it's like people are tired. They're like, I got to still work out. I still got to take care of business. I have friends who are actually in the fitness game who are on on Instagram. I'll give a shout out to my friend Kaylee Hatfield. She's always on there. I think Tuesdays and Fridays, whatever. Hatfield. Um, she's the, she's the bomb. And so, but they have to buy the equipment. So they can yeah. actually set up at home and show people actually at home, you don't have to stop doing your stuff. So I'm not surprised. I just kind of chuckled, but I'm not surprised by this. For me, I don't do push-ups. I don't do <laughs> I don't do weights. Okay. Um, I do some I do some weights. I have a little I have a little like little fives and tens or whatever. But, okay. So what do you do? Um, what's what's the what's the what's the regimen, man? If I want the James Light Junior diet, what do I do? So, the workout so, plan. The workout plan. So what I do is I do a lot of gardening. 
Okay, but that involves Party. me like knowing how to keep things alive. I don't. Like... I, I know. You can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> I told you, I, I got a, I got one fake plant. That's all I have. It was a I'm... gift. I didn't even buy it myself. I don't think I can handle real plants. <laughs> I'm so sad it's fake. Um, no, here's the thing. So, um, I do a lot of walking too. So walking is help also. But no, but my yeah. thing is, um, it uh, the guarding thing. It helps with dexterity. Yeah. It helps. It helps with movement. It helps with I'm squatting and getting up. I'm squatting, getting up. Sure. I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm moving heavy plants. I'm moving heavy bags of dirt. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that have. There's a lot of exercise that goes into actual uh, guarding. But even when I'm watering the plants, I'm moving the hose around. I'm doing this over here, and like I'm carrying buckets. Lots of I carry buckets. I have a I have a line across my hall fence of plants, um, and they're in pots. So I take yeah. buckets of water back and forth, back and forth. That's and it's lifting and going over there. So that's so that's what I do actually, and that's what helps me a lot. It's like a Rocky workout montage, you know? <laughs> You're the best around. Yeah. <laughs> I actually been to the James Lott Jr. compound. Yep. I mean, you have so many different kinds of plants in your estate. Uh, how do you decide which ones the ones are worthy of a collection and which ones you're kind of like, nah, I'm good? That's a great question. I think Flo, I never, that's, I never, that's what I do. I mean, that's, that's what I do. It's an interview show. I don't know. <laughs> I, you're a host. You should be a host. Um, that's actually, that's a really good question. Um, a lot of them are due to location because I, I'm an organizer by trade. I can't have a freshman by trade. So everything I do is organization. You know yeah. about me. So that's what I do. So when I mapped out my yard, I go to pick, I go to pick plants or flowers that will fit that section of the yard. So if they say full sun or part shade or moderate light, I have, I, the plants get picked first for that because I'm going because I, I used to have an inventory going like I need some actually I need a couple of plants um, so I'm gonna go tomorrow. I know where they're placed so when I go I go okay I gotta go to the full sun section and then uh, okay. I know what's going on in my yard. I go I need more plants of color. <laughs> um, I need Don't some we colored all? Plants. I need some colored plants. <laughs> no. um, so I go like like recently I bought a bunch of um, they're called. Uh, but they're 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 purple so i got a bunch of purple plants then i got yeah. some chrysanthemums the other day that were burgundy so as i was trying to map them out like my rose bushes were very deliberate i have a yellow one i have a pure white one no pure yeah. white no um then i have i don't really like that's crazy colored and section then, pure, pure white, white section pure white section it's, it's way over there no yeah. um i segregate my plants no then i have uh -huh. one that's a purple red combo so like they're strategically placed so that they're different colors because they have areas that have jungle areas where I want, oh, I want a jungle, so I have a lot of greenery, leafy things. So I really go, I mean, it's, it's a science. I mean, so it's funny you ask me that. I really yeah, do yeah. know what I have and what I want. Like right now, I want two giant trees in the front of my gate. I'm going to put them on each side. So when you walk in, it's like an entrance. Uh, so I want to do that. So that's my next purchase. Yeah, you guys should probably see the uh, James compound, the James Lott Jr. compound. Uh, Heywood Wong says, hope you guys aren't close to the wildfires. Thankfully, we are not. Well, this round of wildfires, because every so a couple of years, there are wildfires that are close to LA area, but we're, yeah. we're sparing the current ones. I think it's like, what, 3% contained? Which it's pretty yeah, nice I, I know. But they're literally like 30 miles away from us, 40 miles. We're not near any of us. I have friends, though, in Northern California who had to evacuate, so... Yeah. I feel sorry for them. They had actually leave. My one friend just got back to his house 13 days later, and he's on a generator. There's no power or anything. So and he said um, he's the only house standing in his neighborhood. You know, people say that 2020 sounds like a movie. I think it's like the trailer. It's like everything is happening at once. <laughs> you know and there's wildfires, too. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. My dad calls me every day with a new thing he heard because he watches Fox News all the time. He's like, I heard California's going to go. as a sinkholes. I'm like, there probably is. Dad, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I can't. You know, I'm, scared, I'm, I'm scared of the murder hornets. So that's all I care about. I don't know murder hornets. That's all I mean, you know, and step chickens or whatever. I don't need that stuff going in my life. I'm like, everything else, I'm fine. Yeah, can we go back to, to the Tiger King days back in April where it was like kind of fun being locked down and that's well, like, oh, this is a normal one? Like, okay. But you know, so funny for me is like I've been in a fire before, so I don't like to lose everything. I've been in a fire and it's not actually it's not a fun thing. Um sure. and in so a I world. Like, in a world where fires happen though. Um and I lost voice my, guy? Uh, you know, I do that to you. Yeah, um, you but I, I lost I lost everything, so I do know what it feels like in all seriousness, I know what it feels like. Yeah. But twenty 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 has been a very interesting year. Yeah, so, okay, I know I'm jumping ahead here, man, but look, it's it's September tomorrow. Yeah, show. you know what, you're right. I want to jump around for once. Your show. Why more. not? Uh, it, it's September 1st tomorrow, right? At the time this uh, this airs on podcast, it's so probably September 1st today. 
How's 2020? I mean, with everything considered, has it been a good year or a bad year or somewhere in between? Are you talking for you personally. Who- well, you're talking to somebody who had some really rough years last few years. So I didn't know you then. I feel like I've known you forever, but I, I know, just met right? you like, like a year ago. No, I do. I'm I mean, I said, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I said I'm, I'm trying to be sincere. God bless okay. America. Okay. Um, no, I, do, I like you. Know, I like you. And I've only, I've only known you like over, little over a year, maybe. Like over, over I, a year. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. About a year or so. Um, but before that, I had a really rough like three years in a row. So this actually, for me personally, it's not as bad as it could be. I mean, two years ago today, I was laying in my bed, my face paralyzed. So, right. I mean, this, I'm talking to you. I couldn't even do this two years sure. ago today. So, and then three years ago today, I had lost my dog and my grandmother. And four years ago you know, today, I had lost my brother. So, I mean, I was going through rough times in, in September 1st for like four years in a row. Um, last year and this year, the first two Septembers, that I'm doing good. I've been considering everything's going on. I can move my mouth. I can talk. <laughs> I, my eye can close. Yeah. Um, nobody's dead. I mean, right. so I mean, I'm like, I'm doing. I no. So for me, and of course, I have this big boon happening for me creatively. That is that I just thank God every day for because I. I mean, the ideas are flowing. The collaborations are coming in, and I'm getting interviewed and people. I mean, it's just, it's just I'm getting write ups and interviews. It's like. It's just crazy. I mean, it's just the craziest thing, and my, my videos are doing better than ever. And but it's a result of eleven years of hard work, obviously, that's happening, and a year off because I couldn't do anything for a year. Sure. That, look, for me, this year, I mean, considering what's going on, right? I'm doing okay. Is is there one highlight that sticks out quite yet? Like, like well, yeah, I right mean, now, dude, yeah, one. My one highlight right now is my network that I made the decision to I had to make some money, folks. Um, because it's shut down. <laughs> what is going on with this network? That doesn't sound <laughs> less, less why I'm allowed to make some money. <laughs> no, um, no, but I mean, I had, I had to figure out a way to um, have an income of some sorts and also sure. be creatively challenged and and business challenged. And I already had a network kind of, but then some things fell into place, and now JLJ Media is an online network for other people besides myself. So the highlight is opening it up to that and and people you know I, I make money now off of this and but yeah. i also have great programming forever in a day our soap which is our flagship new show and one of the shows that just came out it's just that's my highlight it's just that i made this I mean, it's a lot of work but i made it i'm a network head now it was something that i never thought in a gajillion years i'd be doing so that's my highlight you never thought in a gajillion years 30 jobs you never thought maybe i can have my own network 25 books. I don't know. 18 billion shows. I, you know, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> but now you can find no, it. Well, no, but what's so, but, but so funny? You no, know, flow. Seriously, it's like I, you know, I yeah, I do a lot of stuff. I know. Yeah. But I just, but I never. There's some things I just never. They really don't enter my mind. There's just some things okay. I, just, I don't really enter. It's like just like they're for somebody. I always think that this happens to me all the time. Write a book. That's for somebody else. Do a marathon. That's for somebody. Else. I always think that way, and then I end up doing it. Going, oh, okay, well. Oh, you did a marathon too. I've done three. Okay, all right. And you gotta I, stop I, bragging. I, okay. And my medals are over there. And I will show this to you just because it's right in front of me. This is one of my first finishing ones. Marathon, two thousand two. I did them in my forties. Oh well, half marathons I've done. No, I mean, no, that's one of those. That's one. It's a half. I've, I've done, done half marathons. That ain't nothing. Thirteen miles ain't nothing. No, I'm just kidding. It's a huge thing. <laughs> you're like, hello. I don't know what you're talking about. And you didn't do it in your forties either. I did it in my forties. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I used to run them back when I thought I was young, and then my joints were like, "No, you're 28 now. Chill out." I was like, "Cool." <laughs> I got out when I could. I got out when I could. It's like, so. But, it's, but, it's, that's, it, is like, there a highlight for you? I mean, how? I mean, how man, are you look, doing? man, it's funny because, like, you know, it's very easy to to look at the bad at 2020. And if I want real talk, this is my time to real talk. It's like financially, it's been one of the hardest ones because not only, and I said this before on a lot of episodes, but not only has the work dried up because of everything I've done involves a crowd, but it's it's the world that told me essentially that I am non essential. So I was at home with this crisis like in April, like, well, I'm not essential. This is what I want to do with my life. What do I, what do, I do? But then that kind of opened the door. Like I, I knew that After Buzz at the time wasn't going to grow. And so I started building more of the What's Up Flobo brand. I went three times a week at first and I started doing other shows. So when they went on hiatus, I was able to like at least build some Excuse stuff. Me. 
Yeah, but but like 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 the comedy song wouldn't have happened in lockdown. Me being on I love that shows. song. Alone in the club, baby. Get yours on love it. Thursday on Spotify. Love it. Like love uh, it. talking to Kofi Kingston or Charlotte Flair wouldn't have happened with the lockdown. You know, doing being on Mary Marino's show would have happened with the lockdown. So a lot of 2020 creatively is great. Like this is the life I wish I had. Yeah, I wish I had like a, a second parking spot or air conditioning. But if this is a way to make money doing this and going out every so often to a DJ for a wedding, dude, this is perfect. Uh, that's why I kind of, I don't cringe, but it's kind of like when someone goes, oh, this is the worst year ever. You're like, oh, I know it's kind of bad, but. It's bad, but uh, I can't, yeah, I'm with you. I can't even complain that heavily. Like, I mean, like, seriously, as you know, I was home for it. I grew like, same with you. I was home for like 90 days straight. Didn't see yeah. anybody. That was tough. I had some meltdowns, but. But, in, in, but I had all these clothes. I had plenty of food. I had toilet paper and wipes. So I, mean, I was good to go. I mean, like, Dang I can't, wipes. I mean, can't complain. I mean, I, I mean, I got, I got Lysol. I mean, I was fine. But it was just yeah. like, it, but it was like, but it, you know, so it was an inconvenience. But I feel like the Bell's palsy and stuff led me to be able to stay home. Like, I had to stay home for almost a year. I couldn't do anything. So I was yeah. prepared, kind of. Yeah, that, that to me, when you tell me that story about the Bell's palsy, it's like, oh my gosh. I, I live alone. All my family's 3,000 miles away. Now I'm single now, too. So, like, getting critically injured or, or being indisposed is almost like the biggest fear. Not even so much dying is like, man, imagine if you need help and there's no one around for an extended period of time. But, um, yeah, I was by myself. Yeah. No one helped me. I, was, I, had, I, had, I had a few, very few people who actually helped me. Oh, you like the song Alone in the Club? That's right. It's a good <laughs> song. Um, and we had our song, Music Is My Life. We had that yeah. on too. And um, someone's also in the works. Yes, we have, we have all kind of stuff in the works. You know that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> well, we don't and I work all the time. No, yeah. but it's, but I just, but like you said, I can't really complain that much. Either. Like I can, but I can't. I mean, I miss the openness that we don't have anymore. But I'm, well, you know, here's the thing, Flobito. Is there everybody out there? This is what it's called mindset. What okay. I decided when when the COVID thing came down, the lockdown came down. I said I can't go crazy. So I said, what are you going to do, James, to not go crazy? And so I decided, I sat down and actually, what's this, I had a binder like this. But that's, I had a binder like this, so not this one. Um, that's a show coming on DLJ Media. I was waiting Manchester for that. Manchester Avenue. I was, I was... You know, come on, Flubbo. Come on, Flubbo. Come on, Flubbo. Um, come on. We'll come um, that one. Come on. Um, I'm casting it right now. So anyway, yeah. come on. I actually want to get a roll for you on one of these shows. Let's see if there's a roll for you on these shows. Okay. Um, okay. So anyway, back to back to I know I, there is a role for you in one of these shows. Oh my god, there is one. Okay. Is it a thug with a heart of gold? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it is a, a spoken word artist who gets trapped in Christmas. How about that? Interesting. <laughs> I'll, talk, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about that. Yeah. Okay. It just, it just hit me now. It's like Flobo. Oh my god, it could be him. I'll do okay. it. Okay. So anyway, okay. So it's anyway, a story. See, let's see, it's, see, Flobo's a learn from me. This is what I do. King of, I am the king of plugging. I do. I do it. <laughs> Follow me. We're all James Lodge. You just sold it. James Lodge. No. Um, no shame. No shame, <laughs> shame yeah. whatsoever. No, 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 no. No, but I made. I, but the the mindset thing was to I had to make a decision. I wrote everything down. I said, what can I do from home that just won't that won't me go crazy? I'm like yeah. interviews. I can do interviews. I'm an interviewer. I have some shows. I can just continue doing that until I see what happens. Um, I'm also a certified life coach. I had a couple of clients that I did anyway. I did already virtually, so that was fine. So a little bit of money there. But all those stuff you said wasn't just dropped up. I said I didn't want to go crazy until, and we didn't know back then how long it was going to last either. We we're thinking, oh, a couple yeah. of weeks, a couple of months, possibly. Um, so I started doing interviews, and I started scheduling them. And I have my my board just like this. This is this week's. But I have my. I, I started scheduling, and they started filling up and filling up. And I was like, and so that, that gave me a schedule. So yeah. they gave me something to wake up to. Give me something to wake up to. I hear what you're saying. I'm in the same boat. They're like, oh, it's Tuesday. What do I do on Tuesdays? Uh, right. Haywood Wong says that. Uh, hey, James, do you want to see Flo vs. Carl? We're trying to get Carl on the show. We're trying. We're trying, get, we're trying to get Carl on the show, but she has her people, and we've been in talks, and, and the negotiations are breaking down. But at some point, we'll get the Curry Critic on uh, having it. Yes. But, uh, but but let me ask you this. J JLJ Media, uh, you know, a lot of things happening, and you, know, you got the books, you got the things. Look, we talked about things that are coming soon. You'll talk about things coming soon, because that's what you do all the time. 
Uh, but let's talk about like running your business as a business because again, I was reading this article this week about about like Apple stock and Tesla stock, yes. right? So you can invest in these giant companies. They've been the, the, the forefront of innovation. They decided to do a stock split, which allows more people to buy stock at this time. Because I couldn't afford Tesla at two grand. I can not even afford four dollars now. Like I have more of a shot. You know what I'm saying? But like, if someone were to invest in JLJ Media today, what would that look like? Is it money? Is it cash? Is it equity? Is it having a show? Is it being a social media person like how can someone invest into your brand to elevate it from the ground floor good question and i read that article with apple and tesla and, and right now they're building a new tesla another tesla site in inglewood over here so it's like another one. Oh no it's in Inglewood. city okay in I'm, I'm city. um nissani brothers um chevrolet is closing down they sold it to tesla so tesla's going to be building right wow. there by sprouts and i call it fox hills mall i know it's westfield Corner city whatever um <laughs> it'll always be fox hills for me in the 80s yeah um, but they, they're, they're still growing. Apple is still Apple. Like they, they, those things have not drink. So the stock is good. They're kind of, you know, Apple's like the granddaddy at these, at this point of a lot of these places now. So it's kind of like, they're, they're going to be around for a while. I don't see them. I don't see them. I mean, I got, I'm, I'm on an iMac. I have an iPhone. I got, I, yeah. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm not, it's not going anywhere. And yeah. Tesla for some reason is sticking around too. And the people in LA love Teslas. They don't love get it. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get either. I don't get either. <laughs> they love Tesla. So I'm not surprised. So to answer your question for JFP, you you actually are anybody who actually has shows on my network that's not mine. They are investing. They're investing in themselves. That's how I look at it as. You're investing in not just me as James Live Jr. and the brand. But you're investing in yourself getting exposure. You're investing in yourself um, in doing quality products. Um, you're getting experience. You're gaining knowledge, um, and you're and you're you're being able. You're investing in yourself to do the thing you want to do the most, which is either host a show. Create, produce a show, act in a show. I, I create. I have all those kind of things on there. Um, and also, if you want to do a song, as you know, you're investing in yourself getting that dream. I mean, you're investing in your dreams, basically. You're investing right. in your dreams being realized. Right. That's what you're investing. But how can someone help you to make it grow? How if I want if I was a if a guy with a bunch of money or if I was a guy who had connections, how could I make JLJ Media grow today? Um. Well, hopefully you would have an audience. I, I need people with audiences. I don't That's got no audience. I mean. I'm working on that. You're working on that. So my, my mom watches is, my stuff. That's... <laughs> well, good for mom. My mom doesn't, so there you go. <laughs> care less. My kids and grandkids don't watch any of my stuff. Uh, you know, Papa Jamie's on TV. I don't, I don't care. They don't give a cut. Yeah, don't man, care. love handed. Come on, man. Help me out. Yeah, exactly. Hello. No, yeah. Um, but no, my thing is, it's not even so much money. It's just kind of funny. I mean, I'd love to have money and that help me run things. That would if, The money would be for back house stuff. It would be for me to hire staff. It would be for me to be able to do more, to hire a social media manager, sure. do the data entry stuff. Um, that's what they would hire, but mainly I would want people's exposure. That's what I want. That's how you can really invest in me because then money will come with the exposure. So if you have connections, that's what I want. I mean, so I mean, the money's great, but I want connections. Are you connected yeah. to the networks? Are you connected to magazines? Are you connected to, and I have people in all those areas who do help me, and I thank you very much, the ones who are helping me now. But I mean, I'm talking like Rolling Stone, I'm talking like people, I'm talking, I mean, I'm talking bigger. You know, CBS. I mean, I do, even though I work with CBS Daytime, but I'm like big CBS. I mean, I'm talking yeah. about big ABC, even though I do work with Disney. I mean, there's parts I do. I work with Hallmark Channel. I want people <laughs> to literally give me, invest in me with exposure. That's what yeah. I want. Money's great, but it'd be, it, that'd be more for back office stuff. I did think it's funny. Man, that's always cool to talk to the guy who owns his own network. That's pretty that's pretty sick. Because even though we'll say, hey, look, this is the equivalent of being in your garage because we can't leave our houses, but, like, that's the beginning for a lot of us, you know what I mean? The, some of the great, greatest apps of all time start out in the garages. I want to give a shout-out to uh, Haywood Wong because he's been saying this, he's been spamming this in the chat because uh, it was actually in discussion. He says, uh, like I said before, I go on, on General Hospital Report, I think, and James goes on Draped in Gold, which is the NXT after show. Uh, can't say specifically... But James and I are working on something about we that. We just we're just on some projects. We don't really know what's going to happen, oh, but it well, may be. I'm, gonna, don't, don't, I'm just going to do it right now. Oh, we do right now. The, this is the folder for I don't normally watch that. A new nope. show coming to JLJ Media. Tell us, give us a preview. Hit me. So I I watched two shows that I've never watched before. I got to record them, so for you guys. But the thing is, Flobo and I are working on something like that, where he watch a soap opera and I'll do something wrestling, and then we're going to comment on it. Yeah. Um, give our opinion. So that is coming. So Hayward, you're not far off. Probably won't be GA. Probably won't be GA. Probably days are alive because it's a little more outrageous. 
Uh, but we are working on something. We're working on that, folks. I, I don't know if anyone here who listens watches the soaps, but I, I, I always say this: the only, well, the only soap I watched religiously was The City. Um, but when I was a kid, and I would go to the Caribbean uh, every summer, my mom don't. I'm not rich. Just what we do. We're Caribbean people. He always says, "Oh, you're you're rich. You go to the Caribbean every year." No, it ain't like no. that. It was it was my yeah, cousin's was, house yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> where not we had good. a propane tank that heated the whole thing. Like, like come on. Uh, it, the house is wood, dang it. I mean... <laughs> exactly, exactly. I know, I know uh, that one. Uh, uh, they, they would have Days of Our Lives in the 90s, but it would be reruns from the 80s. Yeah. So, like, the, the dude from, like, The Nanny was in it. Like, the Mr. Yes. Sheffield was, yes. like, yes. was, like, in this show. And I was like, oh, all right, whatever. But the show's still on the air. It's been, like, what, 40 years? 50 years? Now it's 56 years. Get out of here. Like, people are younger than Days of Our Lives. That just blows my mind. That blows my mind. Because they, they can't be the same people, right? Have people dropped... Is it like wrestling where you can drop off and get on when you want to? Or is it kind of like a thing where it's like, oh, hustle my... I used to watch that when I was a kid, but I don't know... Like, how does that work? It's a little bit of both. It, there's, there's some folks who are lifelong. They, they've, 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 people are like, I've watched it for 50 years. But I've watched Days of Our Lives since 1983. Yeah. That's, that's you know, that's literally almost 40 years. Um, and I'm 51. <laughs> so, I mean, that's kind of crazy. My mother has been watched Young and the Restless since it started in 1972. Wow, that's the age of my brother. They're forty-eight years old. So yeah. it's like it's kind of like so. There's people who do watch it lifelong. And there are folks who drop off, come back, drop off. Because you can do that in soaps, you come back. So that happens. Okay, so again, it's from some of the outside of the soap world. This is not the whole point of the show, but we're here anyway. We're we're in this. Space, it's your show. Right? It's your show. But, but like, I feel like in other English-speaking com- countries, like Australia or England, there's like the the show. Right, like the East Enders or whatever, you I know, like the one. EastEnders. You know what I'm saying, like, like or Coronation Street or whatever. Yes. Like, but, but like, yes. what is the one for us? Is it is it the big four collectively, yes, or is there yes, one basically. that sticks out? See, okay, so back in the day, uh, for prime time, the big shows were Dallas and Dynasty. Prime time, the different, 80s. Though. Really? I think. But I'm, just saying, but I'm saying. But I'm saying. Here's the, here's the deal. Okay. What I'm saying is that in terms of America, when you thought of soap operas. Everyone immediately went to those. Not Got even it. daytime. They went to those. At one time, General Hospital was America's soap because of Luke and Laura back in the in the, in the 80s. Okay. So I, remember, I watched that wedding. That wedding is the largest daytime audience ever. Still to this day, 32 million people watched Luke and Laura get married. And I was one Whoa. of them. We all, we, we all skipped school. We all skipped school. Went over to my friend's house. I mean, like, you badass we kids skipping school? No, the kid, teachers did too. Like, everybody what? was on TV. It, it was huge. Was this the World Cup? Did I miss it? Like, what? Yeah, that, that's, that's, what, that's what it was like. Seriously, ask yeah. anybody around my age or a little older, and they will tell you there are several markers. It is who shot JR. Okay. It is I know that one. Luke and Laura's wedding. It is the ending of MASH. And sure. it's like one other thing. Those were like really defining. Because t- remember back then, there were only three networks. There was well, I didn't no have cable, cable, so I didn't have cable as a kid either, so I get it. But there was no cable. Back then, there was, there was no cable, okay? There was no cable. <laughs> there was no choice. There was yeah. no cable. MTV came out in 81. Um, there was no, there was, back then, there was just three channels, and everybody had to, and there was no DVR. There was no VHS. We had to watch, you know. I remember Michael Jackson's Thriller, that we all watched it together, the premiere together. It was a half hour. We watched the whole movie together. That was a big deal. Exactly. It's like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that was, but back then, those were markers. But I'm saying, in terms of what people would think of American soap, right. those were the ones that always came up. Nowadays, there's only four left. Right. I don't. Th- I don't think there is an American soap at this point. I mean, Young and the Rest is the number one soap for the last 37 years. Um, 37 the, years. Yep. Why and even go? The, why even try? If you're General Hospital, why even try? <laughs> right. And Bold and the Beautiful is the number one soap in the world. Okay. So it gets redubbed, or people see the concept yeah, of their own yeah. version. They 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 sell it as a nighttime soap elsewhere. Well, that makes sense because I when I was studying abroad in Costa Rica, they would bring like the telenovelas, and it would be like that time like what we call after school, like the four yes. p.m. to like seven p.m. It'd be like La Fea Mas Bella or Belle or whatever. Yeah, I got into those a bit. Amigas y Vivales was my telenovela see? at one point. Or Maria de la Barrio, like the one with yes. uh, Talia. Like, come yeah, on, man. Talia. I was, I was, I was my girl is Kate Del Castillo, and I was all about Lorena Dessur. 
That was my Rafael Maya. He's always on all the ones, all the soaps, and he was and he was killing people. He was killing. He was killing yeah. bad mothers and so. So I remember watching because I used to go to Caribbean all the time too. Not because I'm not rich either. I don't um, know, man. Everyone thinks we're rich. <laughs> but I was not. Trust me, we weren't. Um, but you know, when you, the further down the Caribbean you were, you were closer to Venezuela, and they had Benevision, and they had their own soaps. And then, of course, here in, in California, my friends who were Mexican would watch the Mexican and also the Central American soaps, uh, Northern Tunnel novellas. So I got both ends, and the language is a little different, of course, because all the different yeah. realisms. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah, wow, I didn't, I didn't know the, the, how deep the rabbit hole goes. Like, I understand. I was just thousands of people that watch it, or else they wouldn't make it if it wasn't viable. But it's always interesting to find out, like, people who take the time out to watch or, or like DVR it or catch up on it. You know, you, you, you think it's kind of, it's almost how when I tell you about wrestling, and everyone's like, oh, yeah, this Hulk Hogan's a wrestler? Like, bro, it's been 30 years. You know what I'm saying? This happened, that happened. It was the Nexus. It was the NWO. It was this and that. Come on. And everyone's like, I don't know. I think it's kind of the same. The difference. That's why I think it, it the is. show would be cool to see how that is. Because yes. here's the thing. I Here's a hot take, and it's probably, it's probably going to roll up some feathers. But there is an off comparison with professional wrestling. People say it is the male soap opera, and I disagree. I actually disagree about that assessment. Uh, I don't think it's fair to either medium. I don't think, I think men watch soap operas and women watch wrestling. I think the storytelling is close to a comic book. But if that gets you to watch wrestling, then by all means. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, it's funny because good. you're right. Because you have to, when you watch wrestling and or soaps, you have to, hi, Dylan Matthews, I know you. Uh, you, awesome. have, you have to invest time. I mean, soaps are five days a week. And so for those of us who do soap recaps, we had to explain to people, it's not the same as doing a show that's on for an hour. We yeah. actually have, and, and all the storylines, you know in wrestling too, all the storylines, everything you have to remember. You have to remember even even, even, even um, comic books too. You have to remember all the, Earth 1, Earth 2, this, there's a whole thing you have to know because the fans get invested. And, they, and if you mess up anything, they will let you know. And so that's why I'm known as, soap, that's why I'm known as a soap historian in soap circles. I mean, they, all the fans, the actors, I know all the soap history. So, but I, but I had to invest myself in it. I mean, and and it's, it's one of those things where I do, I do a bunch of these soap things now on the weekends. It's a lot of work to put them together. And we all, for anybody who does it, who's a host, be kinder to them because it's a lot of work. Yeah. It, I feel like if the fan base is so rabid, why would you even volunteer to be a soap historian? I would be like, oh, I'm sure, done. Okay. Screw y'all. No, <laughs> I'm out trust me. Trust <laughs> I'm me. over here. As, it, as everybody knows, I have a song out called My Opinion is the Only Opinion. My song for the haters. Okay, you got, right a, now, you got a right? song with the haters. Where can and I listen gone, to? Those? Where can I listen it's to? Gone, it? It's gone viral. It's everywhere. It's anywhere you find streaming. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. So, so James Lott um, Jr. My opinion is the only opinion. Yes, it's Love my it. song for the haters. It's it's gone viral on TikTok. It's gone viral on Instagram. Um, I actually took lyrics. The lyrics are from people actually saying nasty things to me. So I actually turned it around and put it into a dance song. Like Mean Tweets, the musical. It's kind of. It's like it's like <laughs> it, it opens with. Too fat, too black, too loud. Too, I mean, this, 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 I do this whole thing about that, and that's what they would say about me on the thing, wow. saying you should cut your hair, you should lose your weight, your teeth are this. So I put it all in the song, but I said it's a dance music. <laughs> the dance music. You know me. So <laughs> that's two step middle fingers up. Ah! Exa exactly. So that's my best. That's, that's the whole thing. Is that the soap fans they attack me just like any other fans, just like anybody else does. So it's there's time. Soap Twitter is bonkers. So I just tell you, Soap Twitter is crazy talk. Yeah, and I've been dragged through the mud many times. So for opinions, that that just sounds rough, man. Uh, I guess the Demeras are from Days of Our Lives. Is yes, they are. Okay. I see each other. I'm like, I don't know any. I, I know nothing about McShane. I know I know <laughs> Vince or McMahon or whatever the names are. You don't know about Shane, third generation superstar, the son of the of the billionaire. So he's so he's the son smooth? of Vince. Is he son of? Uh, yeah, he's Vince's Vince? son. He, the idea Here is that we are face to face, a couple of silver spoons. Pretty much, yeah. They, they, you know, they say that he was a rich guy, rich boy, rich kid, silver spoon in his mouth. Left the company for a couple of years. Well, I came thought back. the daughter was doing stuff. They all are. It, oh, they it, are? Two, yeah. They're two kids, and then the daughter Stephanie is married to Triple Stephanie, H, and right. they have three daughters. So like, it's as big as WWE is. It is still an Irish American ran family business four generations in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just more money than the table. That's kind of what That's it is. That's interesting. interesting. Yeah. Balls on McMahon. Uh, but you know what it is, man? It's all about enterprising and trying to, to build up. Uh, talking about this happens this week. Uh, one of my uh, least favorite rappers on the planet, Post Malone. Posty! 
uh, has invested in the esports team. The reason why he's the least favorite rapper of mine is not because of his music. I think it's pretty fine. It's the fact that everyone requests his music at the worst possible time. So I have grown an aversion. Like, you want Post Malone now? Uh, but the top story is that he's investing in the esports team. Wait, esports are big, big enough as it is, but now more than ever, it seems celebrities are trying to diversify their portfolios. Is times that hard, or is that just savvy business sense, you think? Savvy business sense. Yeah. I think, well, first of all, I was like, who's Post Malone? So, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> and so I had to look at it, and I was, I was like, he looks kind of familiar. You know what, Jerry Smith and Flobo. So I'm like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> and then I, then I remember, oh, it's that one song I always hear, Sunflower, the Sunflower. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, from, I guess from Spider Man or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, the Spider Verse. That song was that song was huge. That song was. Like I don't under, I don't quite get it, but the movie's great though. Okay, I think I can see the movie. Is it a Black yeah. Spider Man in that one or something? Yeah, yeah Miles Morales. Yeah. Okay, I said Black Spider. Okay, so got a Negro. I mean, okay, technically, he's half Dominican if you want to be technical about it. But so he's Afro Dominican. So he's he's Latino. Got it. But the Dominicans don't want to play on that side. I said it. <laughs> I'm like, they're still black. No, yeah. but no, but no, but I, I think about who, like who, I mean, I think, I think, I'm like, I think I've heard his name. I know he's a big rapper. I don't yeah. get face tattoos and stuff. I don't get all that stuff. Um, but no, it's very, very smart because you, because even in, like for me, I like I said, I'm not just a person in media. I have an organizing business. I have this over here. I have a house. I have another house somewhere. Like you have to nowadays, you can't have just one thing. True. You have to really spread your wings because there's so many ups and downs out there. That something may start to dip. At least you have that over there. That's what saved my ass many times. I was yeah. like, oh, so the so the organizing kind of well for me the organizing just died. Um, right. So I was like, so the media took over, or I have this house. The house is making me money. It's like like there's there's like there's things that I I looked down. So I think um esports. I mean, I'm not a gamer at all. I try. Like, Lord knows I try. <laughs> I'm like, where's Miss Pac Man and Frogger? I don't know what's going on. Wow. Uh, you know, where's my Atari 1600? I mean, I don't know what's going on. My Commodore 64. I don't understand what's going on. Where's my Tandy 2000? I don't know what's going on. Where's Pong? Yeah. Ding, right. Ding, Pong's classic, though. I can't, you can't knock on Pong. I uh, played but, it when it came out. So, so, but the thing is, like, if you're talking about good business sense, right? If you had a chance, even a billion dollars, you post Malone money, what would you buy into? What would you put your money into? That's a good question. I don't know. Buy? That's a good question. I would try to find things that were probably outside of my of my industry that like i probably do more real estate i would do more technology i would do more um like medicine i think, I think those are things to kind of go into those kind of fields it's, kind of, it's like good to have something going on in there because those are always not they're never changing i mean insurance yeah. insurance those are all places that they could they, they're always you need them they don't yeah. they always say it's like things they say is transportation <clears throat> medical, um, there's a feeling that they just never go out of style. Real estate never go out of style. So you never, you won't do something media related. You wouldn't get a TV studio. You wouldn't uh, get a rap well, I mean, career. Well, by then, hopefully, I will have. Yeah, I'll have a studio. Have a studio. But if I was going to invest in other stuff, I said I would invest in other stuff. I would diversify. I'd be like, that would diversify. For but sure. I would have. You know, I would have. No, I would totally. You know, if I had money, of course, I'd have a huge. Well, I want a huge compound. Well, so you know what like, I mean. Like, like if you were, if you blew up on like the the digital network, and but you wanted to run like a, a media school for people, or like a whatever, like a equipment rental or something like that. But no, real estate works. Real estate always works. Uh, I would totally blow it on chains and be that guy. No, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't. <laughs> I hate, dude. I hate jewelry, man. I don't. I don't get it. I don't get oh, wow. it. Like, I I don't wear it. I guess because I was I was raised working class in New York. Like, you just walk around with jewelry on, like. Um, I, I had this argument, semi-argument with uh, my ex-girlfriend. This is why we're exes. But she was like, I was like, I don't see the point of an engagement ring. And she goes, what do you mean by that? And I was like, well, if there's an engagement ring and there's a wedding ring, wouldn't it make more sense to have an engagement bracelet? And she was like, I guess that's cool. Like she was like, so her brain was like, I'm ready to get mad. At you. Yes. you make so much Please. sense. Uh, I don't, I don't get the people who buy chains. I don't, I totally don't do that, man. I'm not if you're, if you're flashy like that or what. I like jewelry. I, I, I'm a total... Puerto Rico, whatever. I love jewelry. My mother Dookie loves jewelry. chains. Love bling. I don't do you know. I don't do necklaces anymore. I don't do chains anymore. Okay. I like I like rings. I, I love rings. Um, I do. I do. I do. That's what I'm, I'm. I'm a ring person more than anything yeah. else. I love. I love the big block rings. I have my family rings. Um, I'm a, I'm a Taurus, so, so emeralds my my birthstone. I have, I have my great uncle's birthstone emerald I'm ring. Jealous. It's gold. Um, I'm fly. I have, a, I have a ring with an L on it that was given to me. I wear that one. You know things okay. like that. So I yeah. like rings. My family were, were blingers. My mother, my daughters, my sister were all. We all like jewelry. 
Uh, my dad actually, it doesn't even fit him anymore, but he had like a, it, we can't, I guess you can't even wear it now for a bunch of reasons, but it was like a ring, but the stone was actually ivory. It was like an ivory, like an ivory setting, but it's like, dude, you wear that, everyone's like, murder it! Yeah, exactly, <laughs> you know? poor elephant. Yeah, it was yeah, dead before yeah. I got it. I couldn't imagine doing it. Uh, but you know what, look, I, I don't, it, cause I, I think everyone has their own stupid purchase, so I don't understand buying jewelry, but I, I drop like, 300 for that championship belt so like i totally get would you have extra cash bring a hole in your plot in your pocket being like i'm going for it <laughs> you know what i'm saying but uh if well, you know i buy thing... plants you know i buy plants that's all we buy if i have more money oh fair enough uh for me though i probably would invest in uh in a uh, food to drink you know full beto juice you know what i'm saying or <laughs> or my own restaurant like i would totally go into food and beverage like why not but you see know? food and beverage for me is too hard because they, they 95 percent of those places we crash so I was like, I love food and beverage. I'd love to have a, you know, lot wines or whatever. That'd be great. Um, but I'm just like, mm, I don't know. Can we talk I about that grapes. now? I do have grapes. This guy has grapes of the wine variety in I his do. house in Englewood, California. We're all waiting for it. We're waiting for the lot of wines. I When's that coming? It's a lot of work. I went to look it up. It's a, a lot, lot, of lot of work to bet. make wine. A lot of so, work. So one day, I, I made this summer because of COVID, I made lots low quat jam. I did do that. And I gave that out to people. Um, Is your face good. on the label? You know, I, you know, I should have did that, but I did. I made labels and I put my face on them. Like, <laughs> I didn't do that, but it was lots low quat jam, and I had and I had all these low quats I get twice a year, and I made jam for the first time. And it was actually a lot of fun. I never did it before in my life. Yeah, yeah. Well, why jam? Uh, because I was thinking, because actually it's really good though. Cause you put it, you can put it on toast, you can put it on waffles, you can put it on pancakes. It was good. No, I wanted to find something that was <laughs> frankly easy. Yeah. Um, I was like, what can I do at Loquats? And they were talking about all these fancy recipes. And I was like, oh, screw that. Um, I said, I'll just do something that's really easy. And literally, it was like I had the ingredients. I had pectin, I had cinnamon sugar. Um, you know, it's all these things I need. And lemons, I, cause I have lemons my, on my yard too. So I had lemons. That's all you need. Simmer it, smush it around, blend it. You're good to go. <laughs> Wow. Uh, yeah, you're good to go. I want to give a shout out to the people checking in on YouTube, on Facebook, and on Twitch. Uh, just This is What's Up, Lobo After Hours. I've been here with James Lott Jr. I'm picking his brain about every. I am being so annoying asking him about everything. I'm all, I'm all yours. Uh, you everything on Tell the me. planet. Uh, question. Uh, this is kind of a, a recurring theme. This comes from Twitch. Uh, COVID life. Uh, a lot of our guests I ask this question. So if you don't want to answer, I totally understand. Uh, okay. Dating, how's it changed? Has it improved? Has it worsened since being under lockdown? Woo! I just got dumped a couple days ago. So you got no one dumps James Lott Jr. Do you, they did. What is how? By text. I'm, um, oh no! I know. I know. It, was, it was. I was sad. Um, I'll kill him. I know you should. Um, and but this person has, I think, has some issues of being hurt. Um, no. So I think. I, I, I told, I told, I went out this person. I told, they almost said their name. I told this person um, they need to get help, obviously, for, they, they were paralyzed with fear of getting hurt. So they perceived something that I did as trying to hurt them. It was basically, um, because because of COVID, it's made things, it's hard to date in LA anyway. Period. First of all, period. Period. But coming to, but doing this, a lot of it was phone, FaceTime, texting. That was all most of our relationship was that because we just couldn't get together as often or whatever. And then, so it was a, a case of I fell asleep, which I really did. It was, it was, it was midnight at night. Yeah, we old. They texted. I, I'm old. They didn't get a response from me. They thought I was trying to ghost them or something. I don't know what's going on. I was like, no, that wasn't it. I was asleep. Well, you did your show. Um, I was like, that was at 10 o'clock. I finished at 11. A lot can happen in an hour. From 11 to midnight, I fell asleep. No, yeah. maybe so there were some trust issues, and but we were dating for like almost two months, yeah. and I was really, I really liked this person, and I'm, I almost said their name again. I'm saying, see the loose lips. Um, and I was. Was the actual meeting was that difficult? Like the actual, not say hooking up. That's kind of. A, but I'm saying we, the we actual connection. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't, well, okay, so there was no sex. I, mean, I, 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 I do they do this, this, your this business? Is, this, is late, this is late night. Oh god. Okay, okay. okay. Well, you know, but I'm saying the actual connection of saying, "Hey, look, I see you on a screen." This is this is this is like demolition, man. Uh, let's try this. Does that change? Does it improve any? No. What's the thing? So her thing is, it's that it's a mixed bag because there are folks who are like I don't care about the virus. I'm like, okay, we're not getting together. And then there's folks who are super scared. So and I'm in somewhere in between. I'm kind of like, oh no. 
but that, but see, I get tested, so I've gotten tested. I've been negative sometimes. So I'm, well, not sometimes. I've been negative both times. I, I'm like, I, that was okay. Things like that. I've been negative the times I've gotten tested. What I meant to say is that you do it, but then of course, if you do anything outside, you could, you could be infected. I mean, it's, it's a weird cycle. But I have yeah. been negative the several times I've been tested, and and as and most people know, I'm usually at home most of the time anyway, or my sister's house. That's it. Um, not around a lot of people. I don't eat in restaurants, something like that stuff. But I, I, whatever. So that was a negotiation process. It was kind of like we got to negotiate if we meet, what kind of meet. But see, I grew up in the age of AIDS, so I've been through a virus before, sure. and back then it was very much like okay. Are you positive? Are you negative? Do you know? Before you even meet, that those discussions happened before you met. Um, so it, it reminds me of 30 years ago, basically going, okay, are you are you positive? Are you negative? Do you wear a mask? It's like there were some there were certain conversations that have to be had that right. you probably would have had if there wasn't. Um, and so the the sex part never happened because we never got that far uh, because of COVID. It probably would have happened if it wasn't COVID. But it just, it just didn't. It, just, it makes everything... L.A. is hard anyway, but now it's even harder. To yeah. Date. Do you feel compelled to try again? Or it's kind of like, nah. I'm a hopeless person. I always I always think, there's somebody out there. I know, I'm like, oh, I hate being a sappy. Oh, man, sappy. dude, it's... I, I can't. I'm I'm just... It's weird. I'm, I'm going to sound like, like, a, like a robot. But, like, yeah, there's, there's moments during the day, you're like, man, I'm by myself. But then at the same time, you're like, man, I can't imagine, like, not being myself all day or trying to figure out what someone else wants to eat or, you I know, mean, going to the mall. Like, I just, I just can't. So I was like, mall. am I destined the mall? Yeah, the mall. get some coffee over there. The walk, the <laughs> yes, walk the dog. Dude, walk the dog this, this <laughs> over here. <laughs> you know, break your big balls. Uh, <laughs> you know, like, what, what, what does that mean? Maybe I like just being by myself. You know, who knows? I just got to say, watching your show with your brother – was heartwarming and hilarious, and he's so New York. He's oh so my New York. It oh reminded my me of my family in New York. I was just like, oh, I miss New York so much. Anyway, this dude notes. was in the car sipping jungle juice. I I'm loved like, it. No one can see you in the vehicle sipping alcohol. What are you doing? It's but see, <laughs> that's the thing about New Yorkers that I love so much. Yeah. New Yorkers are so much New Yorkers. They yeah. are just themselves. That's where I get it from. My mother's a New Yorker. My family. I, I grew up in New York all the time. I'm a New Yorker, essentially. I'm more New Yorker than California, I think. And I just, because I, I'm just myself. Yeah. Uh, if you guys haven't seen What's Up, Flobo, episode 100 on, on YouTube. I got my brother. My whole family's camera shy. So he didn't know what how to do it. But then I said, hey, man, whatever you want to do is be comfortable. And this guy had this, like, this, this giant Capri Sun, like, like I loved it. I loved it. Sitting in a vehicle. It. So any cop is like, what are you doing? <laughs> just... I loved it. It was classic. It was New York. It was just, It was everything. It was everything. I loved it. Ah, uh, oh, man, he's my older brother. He's my only brother, but he's also my older brother. Just, just a nut, <laughs> just a nut uh, guy. Yeah. But I'll tell him that, man. Cause I talked to yes. him the other day, and he's like, "Oh man, people like the video. All right, it's cool." <laughs> I, I, love, I, love it. I love it. I love it. I do. I love it. Yeah. So I, I need. If I had a sister, I'd be a perfect, perfect follow up. Uh, no, I. I it's, it's just kind of a crazy thing with the whole COVID thing. I think I'm in the same boat as you are, man. Like I. Because I, I, as a DJ, I've gone back to work. I've done two weddings. I have one oh. Saturday. Oh, wow. And uh, it's good that I'm starting to get some of the log jam out so I can get more dates. But the first one I did, people took off their masks as they partied. But it was cool because it was spread out. It was on this, like, rooftop helipad. It was wide, you know. But I was in this smaller venue on Friday, last Friday, and it was like, Hundred people deep in Orange County where masks are fake. optional. Yeah. yeah, no, not even optional. I mean, yeah, but like people went to this wedding defiantly. They they I walked know. past the mask station and was like, "We're not doing that." And it was like, "Yeah, you can do that and go home and be fine." But I have to. You know, you don't I understand. Know. And and it's it's weird because everyone has made up their mind about how serious this is, and you can't tell any article or any video is going to sway them either way. Either you're super scared. Or you're super whatever about it, but I'm in the middle. Like, if I get sick, they know what help me out. <laughs> you know. Same here. I can't get sick. The doctor said, "James, you catch it, you probably die." I'm like, okay, got it. That's all you, that's all you need to tell me. I got it. Word, Screw everybody. Man. I will be. I'll be ten feet away from anybody. So I, I know. And, it, and I've been to Orange County, and it's, it was a trip to see people just not wear a mask. It's like they don't really give a, an f. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that's kind of interesting. I don't understand. Once you pass the county line, it's a whole different world. The orange curtain, world. they call it. 
I call it the Orange Curtain. I mean, I grew up with that. The Orange Curtain is the Valley, L.A. proper, the Orange Curtain. That's how I grew up. It was a very different. And I used to never go to Orange County. I never went to Orange County. It was always very white. It was very Republican. I just never went there. The Valley, yeah. I used to go to the Valley, but that's a different story. And then L.A. from L.A. So I love it. Uh, when I moved to California, my first uh, impression of California was Tustin, California. I thought I, I thought California was was Tustin. I, I was like, there. Yeah. huh? It looks nice, but this is not what I had. Because you know, in the '90s, everything California was like dripping in orange on TV. And if you weren't a surfer dude, you were in Hollywood with sunglasses with a convertible and the winding roads on PCH. And you get here, and it's like, huh? I just strip malls. How about that? A lot. I I have a soft spot. I have a soft. This is not. I know it's not part of your show, but I have a soft spot. How dare you? Malls. I know. I have a soft. I have a soft spot for strip malls. I do. Well, okay. I don't know why. Kind of, kind of I, peculiar. Why? So it, I don't know. It's because strip malls to me are fascinating because every strip mall is different. Okay. And every strip mall, you never know what's in there. Like I've had some amazing food. These little hole in the walls and strip malls. I've gotten strange items I've needed for things in strip malls. Some strip malls will have like uh, a 99 cent store. It's not even, not even the, not, not the 99 cents only, but like a nine cents, 98 cents and up store over here, <laughs> a, classic. a liquor store on that side of the mall. And then all of a sudden they have like chiropractic office and a dentist office. Like I did this, did the, did the crazy, I remember when they were first being built back in the seventies and eighties. And it was just like they're fat. There'd be a fat burger all of a sudden. There, it's fat. They're fascinating to me. I find, I, I well before COVID, I had a show called the Really Quick James Law Junior Show, and I would it would be my adventures all over LA, and I said I for the next season I just finished season two before COVID. And I was oh, like sweet. next next season, I want to do where I go to different strip malls and experience the strip malls, like eat the food, go to the stores. Talk to people. Like I want to do this, but right now because of COVID, I can't do it. But at some point, when we get back to it, I want to do that. I, I'm, I'm yeah. fascinated by strip malls. It, it's funny because like maybe Haywood can attest to this because it doesn't really exist anymore. But when I was a kid, no, I was a kid. When I was in a teenager, the thing that I thought was very local New York that people forget about are diners. They're dying out. But like there was diners. a time where like you can tell how, how you can judge someone's taste of food by what their favorite diner was. With your Arch Diner, King's Plaza Diner, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Milty's, like whatever diner. One of my favorite diners in New York is on 33rd and 8th Avenue. Yeah. And it's not far from the big post office across the street and Penn Station or whatever. And I, it's this diner. It's been there for a million. I think it's called the Something Time Diner or whatever it is. I used to love. There's a place. Okay, so side note. Further down the street on 8th Avenue across from Penn Station. Yeah. I have a place that I go to. This is my secret place, folks. Because I always like would like run out of bags and stuff. The bag man, the bag man on Eighth Avenue between Thirty Third and Thirty Fourth is the bomb. Yeah, and I go man. in there. They're like, they're like, hi Jay. I'm like, hi, I'm back in town. I just go all the time. I think my friends there. The bag man has all your luggage needs and all your bag needs for discount prices. And the stuff lasts. So it's not just super cheap stuff. The stuff lasts. The bag man is downstairs, upstairs. I was like, I thought first. My place, the Penny something, I forgot what that place is. The Penny something is over in, in downtown New York, too, in Midtown. Yeah. That place, but the bag man, it's right there. So I would, I would get off Penn Station, go out go get me a bag. Was it wholesale? Or was it wholesale? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, there, I mean, everything was like, you know, from eight ninety nine to twenty nine ninety nine. I mean, so it's all cheap. It's all like cheap. No, the bag man, I hope, I hope it's still there, folks. I hope it's still there. Yeah. It is the bomb. It's down the street from, um, I think it's Fridays to go to over there. But it's right. like, but literally, know. there's a diner across the street, and then there's a big giant post office. So I'd always go to the diner and get some food. Wow, this guy knows everything. Like I feel like you're the, you're the friend that you you would take a visitor to your town, and we're like, oh, it's James. He got some friends. <laughs> I can't lie. I've been on the other side of that. That's really cool to be like dragged around and be like, oh, you brought friends. <laughs> you know, that's what's up, man. Uh, yeah. Is there anything less on, on your travel bucket list that you haven't checked out yet? More Europe. I want to do more Europe. I want to go. I want to go. I have a big obsession um, with South America. I, I've been to Costa Rica, so I've done that. But I, I do want to do. Um, I do want to do. I'm going to San Jose, Costa Rica, actually. Um, I want to do uh, Uruguay. I want to for some reason. It's very. It's very colonial down there, and it's also gay friendly. Um, but it's also 
towards the tip of you know of down there. I would love to go to I love to go to Brazil. I have friends in Brazil. I love to go to Brazil. Um, I love to go to <laughs> Venezuela. Uh, no Colombia for me. I don't go to those places. Um, Usually, the opposite for most people. Usually, people yeah, go to yeah, Colombia. Like, no, I don't know. I mean, I go to Cartagena maybe because it's, that's where the that's where all the ships go. But yeah. no, I don't. I don't get law. I don't get kidnapped in Colombia or <laughs> like in Bogota or whatever. I don't go to Bolivia. Bolivia. That poor tourism board of Colombia is like we can't convince anyone to come by. Dang it, we got Sofia Vergara and everything. <laughs> I'm like that's okay. I'd rather do the other ones, but no, I, I no um. Some more of those. Right, let's go to Cuba. I always want to go to Cuba. Um, that's the place I want to go. I want to do more Canada. I loved um, Montreal and I loved Vancouver. So I'd like to do some more of Canada, I think. Yeah. But um, that's kind of, that's, that's like, that's only kind of a media place. I mean, more Caribbean, of course. I love the Caribbean. So there's a few islands left that I haven't gone to. So I do want to go to a few of those. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. My, my thing is more like the, I got to make it to Tokyo. Uh, Tokyo has cool. been the white whale. For me, you know what I mean. Like okay, okay. Uh, when I was when I was 16 years old, I did a Japanese exchange program. So the idea was going to be Japanese kids were going to come to our school for two weeks, and we we're going to go to Tokyo for two weeks. And I was taking Japanese. And then my junior high school, 9/11 happened, shut it down. Uh, when I was in film school, graduate school, we were, we were going to shoot our thesis film in Japan. We had the script, we we're ready to go. School was like, we can't authorize equipment being shipped out there. Shut it down. I had a comedy show April 15th, 2020 in Tokyo. Oh, Pandemic God. hit. Shut it down. I got to make it out of Tokyo before I perish. You got to go. do it, bro. Gotta you got to go. You got to go. You got to go. Gotta, I mean, gotta I, do it, man. I'm learning life more about short. you. I'm learning more about you. That's interesting. So you have oh, to do it. Oh, man. My travel bucket list, if, if it's, I got to go to Scotland. That's where my ancestors are from. Uh, I want to go to Portugal, uh, Lisbon. Tokyo. I got to visit Australia. I mean, that's another place. I do want to get to. I do want to get to. I'll, 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 I'll go wherever, man. I want to hold where, a koala. Where, where, there we go. Where's my, hey, you are wearing. So, yeah, where are my uh, Sydney yes. Roosters? Uh, I want to hold a koala. Jersey. I do. Just like, and, and pet it? Like, yeah, exactly. Oh, I, I don't know which one. <laughs> they're, us, they're usually drunk off of eucalyptus leaf. No, my first term paper I ever did when I was 12 years old was on koalas. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I, I, and I have a brick in the koala house at the LA Zoo. Is that your spirit animal? Good question. Maybe it is because koalas just want to eat and lay around and get drunk. That's me. <laughs> I was waiting sure. for a more involved answer. Just want to lay around and just get drunk off of leaking with the sleeves. <laughs> Finally tonight, uh, we uh, were in. No, we're not going anywhere. I'm staying off for th- five hours. Hey, man, bonus Brilliant. content. Bonus content. <laughs> Uh, Dylan Matthews, shout out to Dylan Matthews who said, it's fun I fact, koalas have chlamydia. So, uh, yeah, man, good luck with that. He's still yeah, so I get it. I don't care. I'm still going to hold a koala. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, well, I don't know about you, man, but the world was rock Friday night where actor Chadwick Boseman's passed oh, away. Yeah. Uh, the the Black Panther himself, fit for a king, got the best send-off possible on social media with other people. Life is short. I mean, he's 43 years old, and I'm someone in my mid-30s. I think about the mortality of life. I keep a bucket list. I'm a firm believer in that. I also do resolutions, I know. Uh, do you have a bucket list? And is there anything on your bucket list that you want to share? So I don't do resolutions. I don't believe in resolutions. I don't believe No that. one I, does. I, I'm, I'm very open about that. I don't. Uh, I believe in goals. And I believe that and goals can be broken. Goal, goals are goals can be fluid. Even if they just have, just have goals. Um, and try to aspire to some of them. Uh, bucket list moment. Um, good question. I mean, I have a couple of things, I guess. I mean... I would love to be in Rolling Stone magazine hmm. or Entertainment Weekly. Okay. I would, love, I would love to. I would love to. I don't care if it's a little blurb, a quarter page, whatever. I don't take it. I'll take it. I'd love those are two magazines I've read my whole life. Yeah. Uh, I'd, lo- I'd love to. And those are two things. I'd also love to be. If a bucket list one would be to be in Billboard magazine because I'm a musician and I wrote Billboard for years. So my yeah. stuff's more related to work related stuff, but they would be personal fulfillment for me. Those would be bucket list ones because I I'm very fortunate. I've done a lot of things I've wanted to do. So I've been very. I can't. I mean, I can't complain. I've been to a lot of things that were on my bucket list have been checked off. Would now, it count was, if it was the website though? Yeah, the website. Okay, I don't know if you're like it has to be in my hands. Like it has to be. No, my I've been hands. I like I've been in Forbes magazine. That was my bucket list once. I've been in Forbes twice. Okay. Um, I was once I was quoted and once I was featured. Uh, okay, all right. I, you know, I ha- well actually no, I've been in, I've been in Forbes once, but I was like the Forbes digital because they split the digital side. Like there's like the legit Forbes, which I'm sure you're on, 
but there's like the user generated like I any person can write for Forbes. <laughs> I was on that side, so I was technically in it, but it doesn't quite count. Like, but if I want to impress you at parties, I'll totally say it does. Yeah, say Forbes. <laughs> Yeah, I was a force. Um, or the Voyage LA thing. Oh oh my God, we've all been there. I mean, I've I've had that too. I actually framed mine. Like, I I bought the frame and I I put it right here on my wall. Uh, And I actually look at it. You know, I have that is me. I I did buy the thing to get it. I've not framed it yet, but I do have it. I thought because it was a nice article. I wrote it myself, basically. Yeah, you basically write it yourself and provide the pictures. But hey, you can say I was I was featured. I'll feature it. It got me some attention, so I'll take it. it got me some attention. That's all. Yeah. No publicity is not bad publicity or something like that, whatever this shit's called. You're all about um, that. But no, but I've been very fortunate in my life that, you know, as, as um, I faced death before many times, and I know what it feels like to, and as I get older, I feel it also, uh, my mortality, that I live my life, we make jokes all the time, but I live my life fully to the fullest because I just know that it can change in an instant. I've had my life change in an instant several times in my life. So I'm like, I'm gonna do it. Just you know, live my life. Oh, writer Ian Fleming, uh, Chitty Bang Bang, <laughs> James Bond. Uh, oh, no, when, I love him. I yes. sir, sir Ian Fleming, I guess, says, uh, "You only live twice. You know, once when you're born, and once when you stare death in the face. And I think once you have that moment where you think you're about to die, you look at life. Because I had mine too. I was, I was 28 when I had mine. When I was like, oh, I'm gonna die. <laughs> I am going to die. And when you survive that, you're like, okay, all right, let's." let's Let's hit it. I think my life from, well, I want to say 29, but like 32, <laughs> 32 to now has been it's been so much quicker and more eventful and impactful than, you know, the first 29, 30 years, you know, because of, of understanding what mortality is. You do. When you get when you get older, like I'm less afraid of death. I know it's coming at some point. I mean, it's going to come. Um, but I, and I know that for me being 51 years old, that if I'm fortunate I'll have another good 30 years, hopefully 30, maybe 40 years, maybe, maybe till I'm 90, maybe. Um, yeah. But I don't, but I don't want to live that long if I don't have my faculty. So for me, I'm very prepared to like, let it go. If I can't make it, make it to 75, I'll take 75 for 500. No. Um, Mom is the same I, thing. <laughs> the medical the faculties. But it is. That's what's, when you get older, you start, I think after turning 50, that really did come to me. It was that, well, well at 49, I was paralyzed. So I mean, so my whole year changed. Then I turned 50, I made it, and it was like, oh, now I get it, that life is not forever. There's an expiration date at some point. So right. there's a great saying, that I forgot who said it, but I love it. Um, when you look at a headstone or a tombstone, there's the birth date and the end date. He said, make sure the hyphen is what's important. Make sure what that hyphen represents. You can't help your birth, can't help your death, but in the middle, it's all you. Yeah. I love that. So my hyphen is going to be full because I said I'm just going to do everything I can until that end date happens. Wow, that's some deep stuff, man. Dropping the knowledge, James Lott Jr. So glad you are up to the private lounge. What's up, Flobo? After hours, we're sitting, talking, rapping, chatting, all that good stuff. Now listen, I want you to really sit there and take your time and tell people wherever the hell they can find you. I got nowhere to go. I got Tom. Hit me. Everybody says this. So funny. I just want to say, Flubble, you know, I'm a big fan of yours. I think you're a yours. great guy. Seriously, I mean, I'm being serious. I'm fan of yours, too. I was serious. God damn it. Being serious. I was being serious. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't know if I, can, I don't know if I can even cuss your show. I'm cussing it. <laughs> no, you're a great guy. You're a great host. You're a great person. You work really hard. I think you have it. And, that's why, and so whatever I can do to help facilitate that, you know, I'm here for you. Whatever you need me to do, to help you facilitate well, I want to say thank you so much for buying a t-shirt at flopito.thirdless.com. But not about me, James. Where can people find okay. you? Okay. I just want to say that. I'm, like, I'm, a, I'm a nice no, person I, to say that. I, I appreciate that. It really means a lot to me, oh, man. Okay. Or well, whatever. Okay. So here's the deal. You can find me. and Look around. It's your fake plant. Look your fake plant. Yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty dope, though. It's pretty dope. No, it looks good. No, that shit does look good. I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm proud of it. I'm proud of it. Okay. So my network is JLJ Media. So and that's audio and video. So we have content on both platforms. So audio, wherever, I'm talking every streaming service imaginable, you can find JLJ Media and you can like, subscribe, and comment. So that's from Spotify to iHeartRadio to Deezer to Podcast Addict, wherever you find it, Apple, Google, it's there. YouTube, JLJ Media. So go ahead. That's what that's what's all about there. Uh, my music on any streaming service you can think of. From Google Play to Pandora to Spotify, 
type in James Lott Jr. Um, I have music on my own. I have music with a group called Chog, C-H-O-G. I have music with Flobito. I have music with my friend Caesar. I have music in Spanish and music in English. Go ahead, follow that. I have three new projects coming out soon. One, coming out this Thursday, my third collaboration with the group Chog is called the Four Song EP, and that's coming out Thursday. So Chog and James Lott Jr., that's coming out Thursday. Then I have a soundtrack that I scored called The Music from the Movie Vex, and it's me and other artists. that we I wrote all the songs. Um, and we recorded it, and so that uh, right now I put together all the track listing. It's like twelve songs, and that'll be out soon. And then, oh yeah, Jack Farmer, that's funny. And then, um, and I get Jack Farmer on a song. I have to give him a song. Um, and then I have, of course, my own. I have a Christmas thing coming out soon. I have Christmas music. I have, I have Christmas music out already. Everybody knows that every year I have Christmas songs. We're working on a Christmas album, and I'm working on a Spanish album. So those are all coming out soon. My books. I started the Really Store Story project. So I have over 30 books that are out under the project. I mean, just go to Amazon, e Kindle, or regular paperback. They're all really short stories. They're really good. Um, I have collaborations. I have solo. Um, right now, Forever in a Day, which is my soap opera that's on my channel, GLG Media, has a spinoff book series that I wrote. So go ahead and pick up those books, of course. And they're, it's like $5. Throw me back. But anyway, awesome. James Lott Jr., books. I'm trying to become the James Patterson of, of short stories. So let's go ahead and type all that in there and just do that. Then lastly, there's my network. There's my James. There's everything else. So you can follow me where all James Lott Juniors are sold at James Lott Jr. on all the social media platforms. It's very simple, James Lott Jr. And if you want coaching, a lot of help.com. And if you want organizing, the super organizer. So that's all of my goodies I can think of right now. I think it's everything. Wow. That and is. Now, now it's tomorrow. Yeah. That, now it's tomorrow. Uh, yeah. I just want to say this is what's the flip after hours. The Monday night show. We sit, we chat with people very, very important with my life or in, out there in the media. It's your boy Flo Beetho. You can follow me at Flo Boys on Twitter, at Flo Beetho on Instagram, and also at Flo Boys on Instagram. I own that too. It's a private account. Don't be shy. Join it. Try to get those numbers up as well. You're watching the show quite now live on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch. If you guys can help me out and be my friend on Twitch, follow the show at twitch.tv slash flowboboys. I'm back here tomorrow with the Everything Tournament on Tuesdays. And of course, on Wednesdays, uh, I do the Draped and Gold. Um, sorry, I do the Elite of the Week show with Jack Farmer. And on Thursdays, Draped and Gold, the NXT at the show. Basically, flowboboys.com. He's busy too. He's busy also. He's busy too. He's busy too. Well, you know how it is, man. I do a lot of stuff. I want to thank everyone in the chat coming here so late. Gerald Green, Haywood Wong, Derek Fisher. Uh, Kirsten was in here earlier. Charlene, uh, you guys are amazing. Thanks for coming out, making this a thing. Episode 9. Uh, until next time, of course, man, be yourself. Peace out.